know the art here with another speed paint adventure today we are going to look at the haunted mansion ride at disneyland disney world tokyo disney sea to uh, disneyland paris and hong kong disney so i thought today would be a perfect time to do some haunted mansion ride facts now i have scoured the internet to find some sort of interesting facts that maybe you might not know. I know that I didn't know, so let's get into them. These are by um, Sarah Sands, posted on allears.net. So the Haunted Mansion opened in Disneyland in 1969 after years of development and after the death of Walt Disney in 1966. Since its debut, this attraction with 999 happy haunts has won the hearts of countless fans. With tons of surprises and some shocking history, it's no wonder it's a cult classic. I believe this is its 50th anniversary this year in October, also celebrating the 50th anniversary of, um, Walt Disney World as well. So yay, kind of a good way to celebrate. Um, so one, there are Haunted Mansion attractions at Disneyland, Disney World, and Tokyo Disneyland. There are also two similar dark rides at the other international Disney locations, Phantom Manor at Disneyland Paris and Mystic Manor at Hong Kong Disneyland. I have been to the one at Disney World and Tokyo Disneyland. Now, I want to point out real quick is that I read and one of the fun facts, uh, one person had wrote that the ride is similar both in uh, Paris, Disney World, Disneyland, and Tokyo. Well, that's false because they said that the ride is different in Disneyland Paris. It is also different in um, Tokyo Disney Sea. Um, the the stories are different. Um, I know the the one in Paris is a different story. The one in Tokyo. Uh, Disney Sea is based upon um, this explorer. He finds a totem. The totem is cursed and then shoves him out a window and you go through um, kind of like a hotel, but I think it's his mansion um, through all of that. And then you um, are skyrocketed like you're getting shoot out the window itself. So it's really fun. I like that one better than the original. Is that bad to say? Ooh. So uh, if you agree or disagree, leave a comment below. All right. Number two is the ride was originally conceived as a walkthrough attraction. It even included a museum of the weird. Um, number three, wait time for this attraction is often listed as 13 minutes even when there is no wait. I remember that. I thought that was so strange and funny that, um, that it said 13 minutes and then bing, bang, boom, we were in the ride. And I was like, wow, that was a very fast 13 minutes. So it really throws off your time of wait. <laughs> so, um, you know, if it does say 13 minutes, just go on in. It probably isn't even 13 minutes. Number four, in the stretching room scene at the Disney World location, the room is truly stretching. At the Disneyland location, you are actually inside an elevator. Once you exit the stretching room at its underground destination, you proceed into a portrait-lined hallway that takes you safely under the railroad tracks. See, I've never been to the Disneyland one. I've been to the Disney World one, and yeah, it does, it does stretch, so it does come down. Number five, the organ from the ballroom scene used in the Disneyland location for this attraction is the same organ used in Disney's classic film, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. That's cool. Has anyone seen that movie? If so, leave a comment down below. Um, I've never seen it. I've done the ride at Tokyo Disney Sea, and that was really cool because it does do like this underwater kind of look thing, and I know they don't have that ride at Disney World or Disneyland anymore. Number six, at Disneyland's Haunted Mansion in 1974, a guest brought in a firearm unbeknownst to cast members. He fired several rounds inside the attraction's ballroom scene, striking the glass. Since the glass was so expensive and time-consuming to replace, the roof of the attraction would have to be removed to fit it in. Spiderweb stickers were placed over the damage. Now, I know um, since then they have updated the Haunted Mansion ride. I don't remember which one it was, but do, I think it's the Walt Disney World since it is the 50th anniversary. that They have updated the ride at Disney World 
So I'm not sure what they've done. I'm excited to eventually go and see how it is. Um, I'm wondering if Disneyland's Haunted Mansion still has the spiderweb stickers on it. Number seven, this disembodied head we see in the seance room was originally portrayed by Imagineer Leota Toombs. Is that why they call her Madame Leota? That is so cool. I... That's awesome. Um, her daughter Kim, uh, Kim Irvin, now in Walt Disney's Imagineering herself, took over this role when new footage was needed. That's pretty neat. Um, the pet cemetery at the exit of the Haunted Mansion in Disney World pays homage to Mr. Toad. You can see his statue marker up in the back. Now, if you don't know the movie, um, what's it called? Um, it's like the winds in the willows. Uh, Mr. Toad, um, like can't drive cars. He's not supposed to drive cars because he goes crazy and he gets into this car and he like drives it and he crashes. And I think that's the end of the movie. Spoilers. Sorry, but that's what happens. Um, if you ever want to watch winds in the willows, that's like, I don't know if that's like a short story or one of the stories for it, but that's what I vaguely remember from when I was a little kid. So that's why Mr. Toad is in the pet cemetery is because he died at the end of the movie. Number nine, can you find the cursed wedding ring? After a turnstile was removed, fans theorized that the metal left behind in the pavement resembled an engagement ring. It even became a popular location for Disney proposals. After it was paved over, Disney decided to add an official ring that you can look for. Aw, that's awesome. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't say what location that's in. I wonder if they did that for Disney World and Disneyland, but I think I remember seeing that at Disney World. I don't know. Again, leave a comment down below if you know. Number 10. The Haunted Mansion in Disneyland gets a makeover to transform into Haunted Mansion Holiday every year between late September and early January. The Nightmare Before Christmas themed overlay features characters from this Halloween and Christmas mashup movie. There's even a real gingerbread house in the birthday party scene that is created every year by a team of talented bakers. That is awesome. I really want to go to the Spooktacular at Disney World or Disneyland sometime. Like, that is on my bucket list. I really, really want to go. It's hard to go as a teacher because I would have to take time off, but if I could, I would just go for like four days, four day weekend to Orlando or wherever, if it wasn't expensive to do this, because I really, really, really want to do it. All right, number 11, the singing bus in the graveyard scene in Disney World warble the attraction's theme song, Grim Grinning Ghosts. Though sometimes mistaken for Walt Disney, the face on the bus on the left actually belongs to Disney legend, Thurl Ravenscroft, the song's soloist. Ravenscroft is perhaps best known as the voice of Tony the Tiger, the mascot of Kellogg's Frosted Flake Cereal. He also sings the song in um, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, the cartoon version, um, Dr. Seuss. Uh, he, he's the one who sings that. Um, in addition to Ravenscroft, the singing bus include Jay Meyer, Vern Rowe, Bob Ebright, and Chuck Schro Schroeder. Schrader? Schroeder. I don't know who those are, but definitely look them up. Grim Grinning Ghosts with lyrics by Ex Atacion, I hope I'm saying that right, um, who also wrote the Ghost Host script and music by Buddy Baker was recorded by the Mellow Men, a singing group made up of Billy Lee, Max Smith, Bob Stevens, and Thurl Ravenscroft. The group also provided the vocals in many Disney films and theme park attractions. Awesome. The Haunted Mansion attraction is the number one location in the park where park goers attempt to spread the ashes of their loved ones. Why? Why would you do that? Unfortunately, we're not making this up. Whenever guests are caught doing so, the ride is shut down for technical difficulties. That is so dumb to do. Well, I get it. Like if you're a big Disney fan and you die and you're like, I want my ashes spread out. Why would you do the Haunted Mansion? They already have 999 ghosts. They don't need one more. Like, if you're going to spread ashes, do it somewhere where people are not going to breathe in the bones of your loved one. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense. Like, maybe, maybe just, like, have, like, a little pouch and then, like, toss it <laughs> into, now, I'm not saying to do this. I'm just saying maybe sprinkle just a little bit 
on the ride or like as you're going through, not the whole urn. Because if you do that, the ride is going to stop and it's going to be a bad time for everyone. And you don't want it to be a bad time for everyone. Plus, you might get kicked out or get in trouble. You know, if they're a big Disney fan, like the person that you're doing this for, sprinkle it about the whole park. Just little bits everywhere. Make sure it's not a windy day. So like that people are not breathing in your your dead relative, friend, or whatever. I, f I feel like that that needs to be said, that that is one thing you should not do, is spread ashes, like, on a roller coaster, on some other crazy attraction, just for the, you know, health benefits of everyone around you, kind of be considerate. You know, if, if that was me and my ashes were being thrown about, um, I would come back and haunt you. I'd be like, you did it wrong. I'm sorry, but you did it wrong. So now I'm going to have to haunt you for the rest of your life. I'm sorry, but that is the way it has to go. Too bad. So sad. So since we have a couple minutes left, I decided to find another thing that goes into a little more detail on some of the facts that I had just given. Um, so this one is from attractionsmagazine.com. So originally the haunted house mansion was going to be a walkthrough attraction where guests would be led in small groups by a cast member who would describe scenes that lasted two to three minutes each. My God, that would be so boring. Um, there was an attraction at Walt Disney World. It was a Pirates of Caribbean ride or like performance thing it was so boring I thought it was going to be a ride and then it wasn't and I was so upset because there was no seating and the story was super boring I didn't understand what was going on and all I wanted to do was sit down so to tell me that they would describe things for two to three minutes would be a nightmare I'm glad they didn't go with that um, this other one I wanted to read was, while the late Walt Disney Imagineer Leota Toombs is the face of Madame Leota in the seance scene, voice artist Eleanor Audley provides her voice. Audley is best known for being the voice of the mistress of all evil, Maleficent, in Disney's animated feature Sleeping Beauty. I knew that. I, I knew the voice was the voice of, of Maleficent because you can totally hear it. Um, during Haunted Mansion Holiday at Disneyland's mansion, Imagineer Ki Kim, I'm never going to say this right, Irvine, um, Tomb's daughter, can be seen performing the spirited role of Madame Leota. Oh, that makes sense. I, I get that. Um, there are 20 tombstone tributes, both inside and outside the mansion, that honor the Disney legends and and Imagineers who created and maintained the attraction. Aw, that's so nice. Um, the designers of the Disneyland version of the attraction originally wanted to make the outside of the mansion look spooky and rundown. While Disney, however, wanted to keep the outside pristine and let the ghost take care of the inside. Makes sense. The Haunted Mansion at Disneyland was Disney's first major attraction created without the direct supervision of Walt Disney. Walt did review many of the early vignettes, but he never saw the completed show concepts. I think, it, as I said before, he had died in 1966 and the ride um, opened in 1969, so he didn't get to see the, the final um, fruition of the Haunted Mansion ride, so... Um, he he was a part of it, but he wasn't fully a part of it. Um, there's one more. Oh, at one point, Imagineer and Disney legend Claude Coates briefly developed a water ride version of the Haunted Mansion in which guests would float through an old plant um, plantation house ruins partially submerged in a Louisiana bayou. That would be really cool to see. Um, you could also get kind of... Um, now, you could probably add in the princess and the frog aspect to it as well going into that. Now, um, there might be some implications with that, but as long as you didn't make it racist and you're just using the plantation house as the haunted mansion, um, I think you would be okay as long as there wasn't anything else behind it. Uh, that would be a really creepy, um, ride. You know, you have like those standing, um, alligators and stuff in it you'd have the flickering lights 
Ooh, that would be awesome. Oh, and then you could have like Dr. Facilier um, in on it too. That would be an awesome ride. Oh, that could work out perfectly. I just came up with a new ride to add in to the Princess and the Frog. And I think it would be really cool. If you know some Imagineers, tell them about my idea, please. I want, I want to see this. If they could maybe do that as they're changing Splash Mountain, that would be also awesome too. But I think this is where I'm going to have to end it. And I will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, my art darlings. Hello, my art darlings. Again, this is the end card. Um, I really hope that I can get like some artwork to maybe post up here too. Um, if you become um, like a, a member to my coffee shop or my, my coffee um, site um, and, you know, donate, maybe if you donate once, um, maybe I'll grab a picture from your um, Instagram or Facebook or whatever if, if you're an artist and post it up here if you also have fan art of my lovely pumpkin girl here uh, maybe I'll post that too and then maybe I'll try and figure out how to like scroll names across the screen to those who um, tip me on coffee you don't have to be a member like you don't have to donate every month or something just once is fine and that would work just as well I think that would be really cool to see um, otherwise, I don't really have anything else to say. Uh, again, I do have a coffee shop that has buttons, scratch the buttons, pins, magnets, stickers, prints, and some embroidery. Uh, please check it out. There is also free shipping um, from wherever I can get it to work. Um, it's through PayPal, but I might also start doing Stripe if you think that is helpful too. Let me know in the comments. Oh, and of course, don't forget to subscribe and like this video if you want to see more of this. All right, don't forget to stay hydrated, sleep well, eat right, and have a wonderful day.